let's have a look at the situation. Kylie has a hand of four cards, so that's what she's got available to her. Seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, six of clubs, eight of spades. Before we go any further, let's just note down, this is kind of like your sample space, right? So I'm gonna write down, this is question 16a. Because she has two different kinds of sevens, I'm gonna call this seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, and then I believe she's got some six and some eight, but she doesn't have any more sixes or eights, so I'm not gonna bother describing those in, in this suit, okay? So here are the possibilities. She takes three of the cards at random, places them on the table, and adds the cards' values. Then, this question introduces some slightly new language to us, right? It says construct a table. The table it's talking about is one of these. We just drew this thing, okay? But then it says, construct a table showing the probability distribution. What is that? More words describing stuff that you already know, okay? So this table that you've already drawn up, put like an arrow toward it, this thing is called a probability distribution. Thankfully, this isn't always true of all names, but this thing is exactly what it says on the tin, right? What, is, what does this table tell you? It tells you how the probabilities are distributed among the different options, right? It's like, oh, how much probability does this one have? How much probability does this one have? It's distributing them across, okay? Let me give you a moment to pause. Uh, go ahead, draw your table, and then have a think about what's being asked. The discrete random variable in this case is adding the card's value. So it's actually very similar to this example I gave us before. It's, it's the total, okay? I'll give you a few minutes to do that and then we'll come back together. We've all made a bit of progress. Some of us head in the right direction, others a bit confused. So let's try and get on the same page together. Firstly, we've got this to start with and I need you to remember the discrete random variable that we're actually interested in because in any given situation, you can choose anything to be your discrete random variable, right? Like I said, here we're looking at the totals, but I might have picked the number of coins that she picked up or the amount that's left inside the bag, etc. In this case, what is the variable of interest? What are we focusing on? It's the sum, the total, of the three cards selected. So, the sum of three cards. And it's worth noting this down because a few of you wrote down the discrete random variable was, say, the card that was chosen, right? Now, that is a discrete random variable, but it's not the one we're interested in. It's not the one that Kylie is actually focusing on, okay? So, the sum is what we're going to be looking for. When we draw the table in a minute, that's what's going to be here. These are the particular values that it can take on, right? Now, I need to know what the possibilities are, right? I don't know, it's obviously not 5, 10, 15, 20 cents, because it's not money, okay? So I need to know what are the options, right? Selecting three cards, did you work out how many different ways are there to select three cards? Did everyone work it out? Yeah, yeah hopefully you counted up four, right? And we can actually just do this now. Um, when you've got questions that are small like this, listing them out, it, it works just fine, okay? So I'm gonna write out, say for example, I could go seven hearts, seven diamonds, and the six. That's one of the possibilities, right? Give me another one. Seven hearts, seven diamonds, and eight. Great, give me another one. Seven diamonds, six and eight. And the last one? Seven hearts, six and eight. Now, if you're like me, I always get a bit um, suspicious uh, when I start to list them out. I'm like, did I miss any of them, right? Now, one of the really nice ways of looking at a problem like this is to look at it from the opposite angle. Um, you could do this to solve the question in the first place, but since you've already solved it, this is just to do it as a check, right? Put your pens down for a minute and just look up for a sec. Picking three cards, and then adding them up. That's actually the same as picking one of the cards and removing it. Does that make sense? Like see this first combination here, instead of saying, oh, you picked three cards, I could just as easily have said, you picked one card and then you got rid of it. Does that make sense? And then you picked another card and then you got rid of it. You picked another one and then you picked another one. Does this make it a little more obvious why they have to be one, two, three, four options? Because there are only four ways to select one card, okay? Great, so we've got them all. Uh, we need some totals, don't we? So can you tell me what's the total of the first one? 20. Obviously, this one is the same. What about the next one? Oh, sorry, I'm looking at a different row, sorry. 
This one is two more, so what is it, 22? This one here? This is the one that's repeated because that next one, it's just a different suit, yeah? Okay, so our discrete random variable, as we said before, it can't just take on any value. It can only take on one of these three values. Four possibilities, but only three things that the discrete random variable can be. So now I'm ready to draw my table, like so. I'll just leave that. Uh, what do we call this thing up the top? It's the, well, we could call it the sum, the total, but I denote it with a little x because that's the particular values it can take on. Let's put them in order, 20, 21, 22. And then down here, I have my probability that the discrete random variable is equal to these particular values, okay? What are my probabilities? A quarter, a half, or two quarters, both the same thing, and a quarter, great. That's the end of the question for now. There's just two things I want to point out. Have a look at the two probability distributions that we've just, or the two tables that we've just constructed, each of which has a probability distribution in it, okay? So here are the fractions down here, and then here are the fractions down here. What do you notice about both of them, these two sets of fractions? Like, they're different, obviously, but do they share anything in common? Hmm. When I add up 2 sevenths plus 2 sevenths plus 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh, I get 1. And when I add up a quarter, a half, and a quarter, I get 1. Now, of course it should, because going back to what we've known about probability for years and years and years, if we've captured everything, if every possible variable is included, then all the probabilities should add up to one, otherwise we've missed things, right? So I'm gonna to introduce to you, just like here, if you can go back to your notation heading, okay? I'm gonna introduce you to a new Greek letter. You know a few Greek letters, like alpha and beta and stuff like that. This here, does anyone know what it is? It's, well, it, it actually is gonna mean some, right? But the Greek letter is sigma, which I actually, hilariously enough, because I have teenage children, um, I only just learned this morning <laughs> that this has a particular meaning. And um, this, is, this is a symbol that mathematicians have been using for centuries, so not my fault, okay? I'm not making any judgments on what I'm about to write. It just is the letter that we choose. Sigma is the Greek letter for S, and so we use it when we want to sum, add up things, right? The particular things that we're adding up are these, these probabilities, right? So the sum of all of these probabilities, the entire probability distribution, it adds up to, what did you tell me again? One. One. Great, so this is a very important point. Uh, sometimes you won't know what these values are, but you know they add up to one, so you can use that fact to solve some things. Okay, that's the first thing. And then the last thing is, um, before I set you to work on these particular questions, there's not many, because this is not a massive concept, we're just trying to add new language and notation on old concepts. The last thing I wanted to mention was, uh, see this probability distribution here. This distribution has these values. This distribution has these values. If it were the case that I had, oh, I don't know, when we're rolling dice, for example, all of these probabilities down here would all be the same. They'd all be like a sixth, a sixth, etc. Okay? So I would say, let's get rid of this, we don't need that anymore. Um, when, in a probability distribution, all of these values, when all the probabilities are equal, we have this, we have a special name for this kind of probability distribution. Because all the numbers are the same, well you know how you guys all, in theory, turn up to school wearing the same clothes, or a different version of the same clothes. What do we call that? What you're wearing? Uniform. A uniform. The probability distribution is called a uniform probability distribution because they're all the same. Just ran out of space. Uniform. Uniform probability distributions happen all the time because there's lots of situations where everything is equally likely. You roll the dice, you flip the coin, it's not like it's, it's weighted and one thing's more likely than the other. So that's why, because it happens quite a bit, we give it language so that we can talk about it. 